Welcome to the Wander Learn Podcast. I'm your host, Francis Tapon, and in this episode, I have a guest. His name is Rascal. He's a real rascal. He's a 15-year-old dog, and he is lying down next to me. For those who can't see this, this is on the YouTube channel, but for those who are just listening, he's a 15-year-old dog. He's deaf, He's so he can't listen to what I'm saying, and he's half blind, but boy, he's lovable, and right now he's having a nice time sleeping. So he's a quiet guest. You're just going to have to listen to me this whole time. Um, what I want to talk about are the predictions I made in 2018 of things I thought were going to happen and what I think is going to happen in 2019. So I'm just going to read a little bit of the blog post that I wrote back in December 31st, 2017. So at the end of 2017, I wrote this. I said, <clears throat> I'm often wrong. It's amazing how uncommon it is to find humans who are willing to admit that they were wrong about something. We all know that nobody is perfect and that everyone makes mistakes. However, it's stunning how rare it is to find someone who easily and regularly admits to being wrong. Even when the evidence is irrefutable, so many people will deny it and stubbornly cling to the idea that they were right. At best, they will simply grumble and walk away. Humans will almost never utter these simple words, I was wrong. In 2017, I read a fun book. It was called, But What If We're Wrong? It's a funny book. You can just read the beginning of it. It's on Amazon. You can read the, the sample chapter. It's free. So just go to Amazon, search for, but what if we're wrong? It's a, a book by Chuck Klossenter or whatever his name is. Anyway, very funny beginning. The rest of the book is so-so. It's not that great, but the beginning was just hilarious. And so now... In my effort to remind myself about how wrong we can be and how wrong I can be, I made predictions for 2018, assuming that I was going to be wrong about half of them. Lots of people like to say, I told you so, but they're highly selective about what they remember. Somebody will say, I knew Bitcoin was going to go to $20,000, or I knew it was going to go to zero or whatever it's going to do. But they do this after the fact. They forget about all the predictions that they made wrong. So if people are so fucking smart, why aren't you a millionaire? If you're so good at predicting the future and you're never wrong, then why aren't you a billionaire? Okay, so enough talk. Let's just look at the eight predictions that I made in 2018. I predicted that Bitcoin will finish the year lower than it started. It was, at the time I was writing, at the end of 2017, $14,500. Now, from that point, it went up another $5,000 higher from $14,500 to about $19,500. Nearly, nine, it almost got to $20,000, actually. And I said, I'm bullish about the long-term uh, prospect for cryptocurrencies. I bought, crypto, uh, I bought Bitcoin was only $250. But if 2017 was the breakout year for cryptocurrencies, 2018 will be the breakdown year. And I said it's going to be $4,444 just because it was a funny number, but also because it meant about an over an 80% decline in the price. So how did my prediction do? It was crazily accurate. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. Um, because here we are, I'm recording this on December 31st of 2018, the end of the year, and Bitcoin stands at 3,650 or so. It's not exactly 4,444. It certainly crossed that point about last month. It was on its way down. But then it kind of stabilized around between this trade trading range between 3,500 and 4,000 in that zone. So I was off just by a teeny tiny bit. But at that moment, I feel like that's a pretty good uh, prediction. So give me a point for that. I also predicted that uh, Russia would have political upheaval at the end of 2018 and that his Putin's winning streak will 
will uh, come to an end. And that although he will remain in power, he will face more challenges than he's ever faced. And for the first time in his 20-year reign, there will be more Russians disapproving of Putin than approving of him. Well, the reality was that some of those predictions were correct. Um, Russia did not see a wave of protests in 2018, and most Russians do approve of Putin still. And in fact, they did throughout 2018. He had a majority of the Russian population. However, I was right that he stayed in power, and I was also right in the sense that his approval now hit an all-time low, and that Russians now don't trust him anymore, according to another poll. So they approve of him, but they don't trust him. So that shows a bit of evidence of, of that. But I was, I'm going to give myself half a point for that. I was, told, I was pretty much right on the Bitcoin, but uh, half a point for the Russia prediction. I predicted, uh, my third prediction was that Egypt would see another wave of protests. I was mostly right about that in 2000. Uh, 18 in June 30th, there was a, pro a mass protest in Egypt. And I also predicted that Sisi, who's the prime minister or the president or dictator, frankly, of, of Egypt, I predicted that he would stay in power, and he did. So I'll give myself another point there. My fourth prediction was that uh, Zimbabwe would see practically no improvement. I predicted that Emerson Mangawa, who is the vice president of Mugabe, would take over and win the election, win it in quotation marks, <laughs> um, and he, he would rig it in his favor just like he always rigged all the elections for Mugabe's favor. And that in the end, nothing would change. Zimbabwe would still be in a complete disaster mode. And I also predicted that Mugabe would die in 2018. He didn't. So I was wrong about that. However, overall, nothing has changed in Zimbabwe. It's still a shithole. It's still having a ton, of, a ton, ton of problems. And that really hasn't changed. So overall, I'm going to give myself a point there. And by the way, uh, Emerson Mangawa did, of course, win the election. It was disputed and all that stuff, but that's life. Number five, Cyril Ramaphosa will oust the current South African president, Jacob Zuma. So within a month or two of that prediction, that turned out to, to work out. In fact, he did uh, kick out Zuma, who stepped aside. I said, Ramaphosa will boldly continue the country's lackluster leadership ever since Mandela left. And that's pretty much true. Um, so, and he did uh, take the election effectively. So that's another point for me. So far, I'm doing not bad. Number six, I predict, well, it was not a prediction. Back in 2016, I predicted that, actually 100 days after Trump was elected, I predicted that he would be impeached in 2019. That, I'm acknowledging that that was probably, is probably going to be wrong. In fact, that's one of my 2019 predictions. I don't think Donald Trump is going to be kicked out and impeached. And because the reason I made that prediction back in 2016, right after he got elected, was that I thought this guy is going to piss off so many people that the Democrats are going to run out and make sure that the Congress goes 100% Democratic. And it wasn't. The Senate remained in the control of the Republicans. That surprised me. And uh, in retrospect, I didn't realize, I didn't do the math, I didn't realize that most of the seats that were up for grabs were Democratic seats. And so that's part of the reason why they didn't do as well. The Democrats didn't take control of the Senate. There was something like 27 seats open that were Democratic and, and only like five or something like that for the Republican side. So that was part of the problem. Oh, rascal's getting up. So the other prediction is that the stock market will see a decline of 20%. I did. I made that prediction in uh, that 2018. You will see it go down 20%. And believe it or not, if you look at Christmas Eve 2018, the Dow Jones was at 21,792. So that's not 20,000. I predicted it would get to 20,000, but it's pretty close. And it did go down. The S&P fell 20%. Off of its highs, the Nasdaq fell 22% off of its highs, and I predicted 20%. So 
So pretty good prediction once again. Um, number eight, that a Kenyan would run a marathon in less than two hours. No, nope, he was about 20 seconds to uh, 25 seconds longer than that. Oh, that's the sound of uh, rascal. So I was wrong about the prediction that we would see a marathon in less than two hours. That never actually happened. But a lot of my other predictions turned out to be pretty right, which I'm pretty surprised by. I thought I was going to be wrong about half the time. Okay, now let's turn to the 2019 predictions. And this is what I see. I got seven of them. Number one, Donald Trump will not be impeached. Yes, this contradicts my 2016 prediction, which said that he would be impeached by 2019. I'm taking that back. I'm admitting that I was wrong. And the reason I was wrong, and I, the reason I think I, I, it will not happen this time around, is that he was able to retain the Senate. And I just assumed that in the midterms of 2018, the Democrats would win both houses of the Congress. They didn't. So as a result, I think it's basically impossible for him to be impeached. So that's the end of that story. Now, one of my best and most accurate predictions for 2018 was the price of Bitcoin. So I feel like I've got to see if that was just complete utter luck or if I've got some sort of accurate guessing game going on here. So therefore, I have to make a Bitcoin prediction. So my number two prediction is that Bitcoin will double in value in 2019. So 2018, I said it was going to go down at least 80, 85% down to, you know, around 4,000. 444. Well, this time I say it's going to go up to 7,300. Right now it's about half that price. So it's going to go at least that high, maybe even higher. That's my bold prediction for Bitcoin. Number three, speaking about things that are going up, the Standard & Poor Index, which measures the Dow, which measures the stock market in the United States, is going to go up 15% or more in 2019. That's my prediction right there. So it's going to end around at least 2,875. It could go up to 3,000, um, the S&P 500. So check that one out. Number four, Cyril Ramaphosa, who is the current acting president of South Africa, will win his election. And that's mainly because black South Africans who comprise of over 80% of the population in South Africa really don't know how to vote for any other party other than the ANC. They're, and unfortunately, they're extremely dogmatic about it. The DA, which is the Democratic Alliance, is their main competitor. But because the Democratic Alliance used to have white power behind it, now they shun that party, even though the ideas that the DA have are quite good and often better than whatever the ANC is offering. But there's just this kind of knee-jerk reaction. It's the same way that even if you present to black people in the United States a good Republican that would actually benefit them, they're just so have this knee-jerk reaction of always voting for the Democratic Party. You know, Democratic Party, black people vote for the Democratic Party. That as a result, um, they probably will, it's going to be a long time before black people in America change and, and vote for Republicans. And that's the same thing for the for the ANC in South Africa. They're just kind of programmed. This is what I got to vote for, and no matter what. And that's the way it's going to go. That's why I think Cyril Rafael Fosa is going to win again. Atiku Abubakar, a guy you've never heard of, I've never heard of. But anyway, that's the guy I'm predicting is going to win the Nigerian election. Nigeria is going to have their election, I think, in February 2019. He's going against the incumbent, Buhari, who's been not that great, just like all the other Nigerian leaders. And guess what? I predict that Abu Bakar is also going to be not that great. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, Nigeria will continue in its doldrums and being short of reaching its potential of being a superpower. Number six. I predict that the barrel of petroleum will go up 25% in price. There's a ETF that you can follow in the stock market called USO, which also kind of tracks the price of petroleum. By the way, I like to call it petroleum because I hate it when Americans call it oil. The price of oil, a barrel of oil. To me, oil is like stuff you put in your salad. And petroleum is that thing that you, you know, 
as it related to gears and cars and that kind of stuff. So um, I wish somehow we would follow the British lead. The British got this right. You call it petroleum. You can call it diesel. And, but you don't call it gas. You don't call it oil. Gas is that ethereal thing, that thing that goes up into the air. That's gas. Petroleum is the liquid. Got it? Yes, we can slowly change this. And by the way, can we adopt the metric system? How about that? That's another one of my pet peeves. But anyway, so a barrel of petroleum will go up 25% price. You can look at the USO stock price uh, of $9.66. I think it's going to go up to at least $13. Um, and then you have barrel of petroleum should go up to, well, right now I think it's $45 for a barrel. So expect that to go up about uh, 25% as well. All right, that's my, and my last prediction is a personal one. It's that I'm going to finish my fucking book this year. 2019 will be the year that I finished the unseen Africa. And one of the reasons why I started my Patreon page is that I wanted to people to have some pressure on me so that I could promise people, you give me $5 a month and I'm going to give you at least three or four chapters every month. And if I don't do that, I'm going to have people complaining and saying, Hey, Francis, we're contributing $5 a month to your not so worthy cause. And you're not even able to give us a chapter a month. So this is my way to have my feet on the fire and have you guys hold me accountable to my promises. So there you go. My seven promises for 2019, not promises, predictions for 2019. And I want to thank everybody because I just started this podcast in 2018 uh, toward the end of 2018. And we've already gotten several thousand listens and getting hundreds of people who are subscribing to it, downloading it every episode. So that's fantastic. I hope to continue that on to 2019, but that can only happen with your help. If you guys spread the word, tell more people about it, it will really make a big difference to helping the show get the best guests I can possibly get and get maybe some ad revenue so I can justify keep doing this instead of doing this always for free. How about that? All right, guys. Thank you again for listening. This is Fran Stapon encouraging you to wander and learn.